Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to a brand new Demystifying Post-Production Month. My name's Ellie, I'm a trainer at Maxile and I'm joined once again by some very special people, Dustin, Chad and Lionel. How's it going guys? Happy Monday. Yeah, What's up, Ellie? How you doing? Hi everyone. I'm good. And hey to everyone Hello. who is here already with us. So hey to Burn, Hannah, Joel. Nice to see you guys. Um, yeah, looking forward to a, another another demystifying month with a brand new topic. But before we get into what we're going to be doing today and for the rest of this month, I thought I'd show you guys what's happening throughout the rest of July, other than, you know, these lovely demystifying sessions. So as you can see today, we have demystifying post-production, but on Wednesday, we have part five of our hands-on with Maxon C4D Level Up Workshop, where we're going to be diving into uh, the idea of kind of working with color and I don't mean sort of aces color management we're talking vertex color for animated shaders color user data setting up MoGraph color and color blending all inside of Cinema 4D and Redshift so yeah feel free to sign on for that if you are interested and if you are keen on learning about color management I have a lovely little segue here because Max uh, on his Max on Color show has the amazing Cullen Kelly who is going to be covering all things to do with ACES color management and that will be on YouTube live on Thursday so it's a very color orientated week uh, for us as a training team and on Friday we have the amazing Stefan Hashi doing their VFX talk show uh, VFX and chill and we also have a bunch of other events going on um, I know Jonas is attending a event up here and then you can always see all the amazing stuff that's happening for the rest of July as you as you scroll down if you ever miss any of our sessions, then don't worry. Pretty much every single thing we do is recorded and it gets uploaded onto the Maxon Training Team YouTube channel. So if you head over to this YouTube channel here, you will see all the upcoming live streams we have. So things like Maxon Color and Ask the Trainer, as well as playlists of all the amazing sessions that have, that have been happening already that you may that you may have missed and thanks again to Dr Sassy who goes through and timestamps every single one of these sessions and you know we really appreciate it it really is invaluable all of these links including links to project files can be found in the handout section of GoToWebinar along with a very special Maxon merch store link. All you have to do is type in the password, particle magic, takes you to this page here, and we love to give you guys uh, free merch. You get a free t-shirt. All you have to do, pay for shipping, but yeah, you can represent along with us with some nice Maxon and Cinema 4D merch. So as, as we said, you know, it's a brand new, brand new month, which means a brand new topic. And this entire month, we're going to be covering all things to do with particles. I'm going to let the guys explain this a bit more because I know they've been, you know, putting a bunch of stuff together for these individual weeks, covering things like Cinema 4D, Redshift, Houdini, After Effects, Particular. So we're going to be kind of covering things across the board. So Lionel, Chad, is there anything you want to say about like this whole this whole month and the sort of things we're going to be covering over the next four weeks? Mm. <laughs> Lionel, you're muted. Go ahead, Chad. <laughs> oh no, you should go because you have a next week you have a special guest. So you do. Yeah, today. Okay, so yeah, today we're going to talk about Cinema 4D particles, and next week, yeah, that's very interesting. We have um, some people from X Particles um, doing the show with us, so we're super excited about that because uh, this is the first time I think we have um, the people, the people from Insidium, uh, doing something with us, so, and that's going to be very interesting. So those two weeks are for Cinema 4D. Then Chad is going to do uh, the rest. Uh, so tell us more, yeah. Ted. Week, week three, uh, we're going to be getting into After Effects. And we're going to, of course, is going in Trap Code Particular. But what's kind of fun about week three is that I'm going to be showing some old school stuff in, uh, in, in After Effects. Like before we had Particular, we used to use like Foam and Particle Playground, the Psychor effects, things that aren't really uh, known now. So like if you're ever in a pinch, We'll just like show this also kind of like a walk down like memory lane as we go through the, that stuff and then in week four we're going to finish up with um with houdini so we're gonna have a little intro to houdini and we'll talk about like uh houdini 
particles and things like that. Um, like we're gonna go pretty fast, obviously cause it's a pretty robust program. Uh, and then we'll have just like a little, little snippet about um, Unreal Engine and the Niagara system and Unreal Engine making particles in Unreal. So all nice. across the board, we're gonna be doing particles everywhere. It'll be pretty fun. That sounds that sounds pretty great. Yeah. So as you can see, covering a wide range of software over these next four weeks. And yeah, amazing that Bob Ormsley is going to be coming on from Insidium next week. That is it's been really exciting. So Lionel, if I hand this over to you, are we ready to ready to rock and roll? Yes, I am. <laughs> Perfect. Let me chuck that Ooh. over. Also, I want to say hey to some of the other people who have said hello in the chat. So hey to Joel, Anders, Scott, Dan, uh, Corozzi, Alberto, Dave. It's it's so nice to have you guys with us. So yeah, if you've not been on one of our sessions before, inside GoToWebinar, there should be a little questions area in there. You can just say hey, let us know where you're from, or if you have any questions for all of us here, uh, we can you know help answer them live and in the background. I will hand it over to Lionel now for all of the magic. Let's go. This is so gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I know, it's pretty, I'm excited. All right, so, yeah. Yeah, welcome everybody. So today we're going to talk about Cinema 4 particles. And you'll see that you can do some amazing stuff with only X particles. Um, we will do even more amazing stuff with X, uh, well, with Cinema for these particles. Uh, you can do even more amazing with X particles, but uh, it's already very interesting what we can do um, with the Cinema for these on tools. So this is the hero pick I worked on and the project. So I will do that uh, afterward. And we're going to go through most of the tools. I won't go as um, as deep as uh, did Nozman uh, a few weeks ago. So please see this one, which is very interesting. We put it in the um, in the comments. It's a uh, um, Nozman bit on the Ask the Trainer, and is I mean in one hour and ten minutes. Uh, he saw almost everything, but very quickly, because yes, in one hour, you can already do that. So I won't do that. Uh, I will talk a lot about the, um, the vector field and the, for, the force field, which are amazing tools and mandatory to know if you want to do some something like that. But first, let's talk a little bit about standard particles, uh, because already you can do some interesting stuff with it. So let's create a new project. And I'll keep track, with, track of the time so we have time to really um, see uh, what's about the vector field. So the particles in Cima 4D are here on simulator and you're going to use the emitter. This is the most basic uh, emitter. And we, if we hit play, we have something. So that's very simple because you have all the parameter here. You have to be careful that the birth rate editor and render are not the same. So meaning that if I put uh, many particles like that, if I hit render with Redshift or uh, Cinema for this on uh, render, you won't have this number of particles. So you have to keep those in sync. And we have the usual commands. I won't go very far with it, but you just have the essentials so what about the speed variation for the speed a little bit of rotation variation and so on if you want to create uh, to have actual object uh, that you can use with dynamics for example uh, you have to create your object and just put it as a child and then if you want to see your object you're going to show the object that's as simple as that and of course, you can have many objects if you want. So for example, if we put a sphere, now you have a distribution between the cube and the sphere. Very easy. If you do that, you'd better have to check here the render instance so you will have fast playback on your board. You can see here we have the FPS installed pretty fast. If we uncheck this, this is going to be much slower after a certain number of particles, as you can see here. It's already not real time anymore. 
So let's put it on render instance. I'm going to decrease a bit the bus rate editor. Then with those basic particles, you can do some very basic stuff using the simulator and you have the forces. So those are also very simple because you have the usual turbulence and it's going to work exactly the way you would expect. So if I put some strength, we will see our uh, particle spreading around in all sort of direction. If I put a scale, let's decrease the frequency too and put a big bit scale. You can see here almost the shape of the noise in 3D, of course. And another very interesting thing we could do with the, those basic particles is to use, uh, so checking the emitter first, uh, if I use uh, the tracer, you can trace those particles. Uh, this is uh, one, number one, very nice to see, I would say, and I use it a lot uh, in every particle render so that I can have a sense of what's going on. Uh, so you can see the motion because sometimes it's difficult to, to really tell what's going on. With only the particles here, we can kind of see our noise here. You see there is a big band here, one strand particle going this way. Uh, this is harder to see if you don't have the tracer. About the tracer, there is one option I like to use. Here is the limit. So from end, right now we have particles tracing uh, splines uh, the whole way um, during their uh, their life uh, and it can be a bit confusing on in the viewport so you can limit that uh, so let's put it from end uh, and the trick here if i just hit play it looks like it doesn't work because the default amount should be some something else than one so it's going to trace 25 uh, frames of particles meaning that our trail, our trail is 25 frames long. So it will be faster on the viewport and also kind of nicer, I think. More pretty to the eye. And let's change the frequency, for example, to have different settings. And what's cool with that, with those basic stuff here, we already have fields, so we can limit uh, the fields. For example, here, if I put a linear field on plus Z, and uh, let's put it there, we will have our particles going straight away, and then they're going to be spread apart with our um, field so it's very easy to to understand and with that you could already do some interesting stuff it's limited com, um, compared to what we could do with the x particles or houdini or whatever but already you can do some some nice stuff with that let's see for example what we could do one very simple example would be a tornado actually let's let me show you the and file so this is just a tornado created with uh, the techniques i showed you so it's still very very simple it's uh, just a uh, mini rotation then we have the friction well let's see what's going on you can see it's a kind of convincing tornado a bit simple but we have control over the motion as you can see and of course, if I just activate the tracer, we will see that even better. So we can see we have many particles going different way with different speed and so on. And that's just using the basic uh, tools I just showed you. So let's create that very quickly. Then we will be able to move on on the more interesting force field. So let's create a new file and I'm going to create here on simulator our emitter. So let's move it on this axis, holding shift to increment, so to snap to 90 degrees. So now we just have the simple particles. I'm going to trace them right away so to I know what's going on. All right, so it's just a straight ahead straight ahead 
and I'm going to use here on the simulator in the forces we're going to use the rotation for example so the rotation doesn't look like much you have just this and it's going to rotate your stream of particles along the z axis okay so if I just hit play we have this result and actually it's going to rotate along the z axis so if I put the um, the force here is going to make a circle there. So I don't want that. I want to have just a tornado. So let's move it this way. So we have again our uh, blue arrow, which is the Z arrow on the right spot. I'm going also to put it back to the zero position. So right on the center. And now it's just going to rotate our particles. And that's already interesting because we have this interesting motion. Already we could on the emitter here uh, ask to have some variation for the speed. Let's put it more like that. So we have slower particles and faster as you can see. Making a more interesting um, move, I would say. And then the trick is just to add other um, rotation and to limit the rotation with some field. So for example, here we can just use our box field and I'm going to move all of them. You don't have to do that, but I like to do it this way so it, to keep everything organized. So we have our box field here, meaning that it's going to happen only inside this box. So if I hit play, nothing happens then it's going to move on and then you can see it's already becoming um, it's going straight again now so if i just add some more uh, element like that let's also increase the size of our box and i can just have different force field like that with different speed to create some interesting variation So the first one and then this one is faster and you can see they are going to add on top of each other or they would blend on if i move for example this field let's make it happen right at the beginning and this one let's put it there you can see it creates some variation and you can layer them like that as much as you want and what we could do is now add another rotation. So I'm going to duplicate this one and let's offset it this way. So it's going to rotate along this Z axis. So it's going to make a wider turn. And because it's limited by my box field, I'm going to make it much bigger and move the box field here. So it's a bit confusing because here we have rotation and there's actually no way to see um, our object. See, it's hidden if I just uncheck it. And the box field is here. So it's still happening there, but being limited by this box field. So let's make it much bigger. Stronger and bigger like that. And maybe a bit bigger than this. Let's move it this way. Let's hit play and I need to add some frames and you can see it's going to create this curl here. And because I have put my rotation here, actually I would need to make even bigger feel. You can see here because they're moving away from the center of the field, uh, it's less strong so not maybe not exactly what I want so let's move it this way again let's make it bigger and you can see it's going to have an effect even there so it's going to create even more interesting motion okay and now it's going back this way so that's what I wanted and here it's going to continue because um, our rotation is still limited to this uh, box but the idea i would just frame it here so i don't care so maybe it's another uh, opportunity to show you another very interesting in the forces you have here the destructor 
I just love that name. <laughs> so you just put it there, and if I make it, I'm going to make it much bigger. It's going to kill the particles, which just go this way. So it's a kind of way to clean up everything. So let's go back, moving along, and when it's going to hit here, you see it's stopping. So it will be more efficient. And then if I want to make even more um, interesting motion with all that, we could add on top of that one very interesting friction. So the friction is going to slow down the uh, particles as is they were moving through water. It's a concept you can find in almost every particle renderer in the world, uh, particle plugin, I mean, uh, meaning that you find this friction one way or another. Sometimes it's called another name, huh? but it's always there because it's very important to simulate um, the, the resistance of the air, of the water, and so on. So friction is just going to slow down everything here. So at 10, it's already pretty strong, as you can see. Everything seems slower and slower. Okay, but what's interesting here is to associate this um, friction with another field and let's add the random field and the random field here i'm going to use it as pure random so the difference between this one the noise and the random noise is going to apply a special special node a special no noise meaning that uh, you will have areas uh, with more friction than other and this random, the pure random, is just going to attribute, to put an attribute of uh, friction randomly on each singular particle. So that's more interesting because uh, one particle will be more slowed down than the other. And that's typically what happens in a tornado. And it's going to create more interesting motion. You can see we have, we, we can see something happening. So these one are very slow. This one is not really affected. So up to this point, what we can do is just add a bunch more of particles. And I guess I'm going to limit the particle here. Let's change from the end. Uh, yeah, 20 frames that'll be. And the more particles, the more, um, well, it's going to look more interesting. And you can see we have something more interesting. And then maybe I can just tick off the tracer and add a real bunch of particles. And also we're going to stop the emission much later. And now we have the typical motion of a tornado. Well, not so typical, but you, you get the idea. And working on, work on that, you can have some very interesting results. It's just a base, um, base project you know, that you'll be able to download and to, to play with. And th so that proves that you can do something with um, just Cinema for these particles. And there is so much more we could do with it, but I think I'll move on already. Oh yes, yeah, I'll move on already with the force field, which is really the trick to have some good particles uh, with the um, Cinema4D's native particle system. So I haven't looked at the question. Maybe there are some already. Uh, yeah. That was really cool. Thanks. But yeah, we do have a couple of questions. So Joel was wondering, can we use deformers on the emitter to affect our particles as a whole? Do, I'm, I'm sorry, could, could you repeat? Oh, you use deformers. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, no, you can't use deformers. You would have to use um, the matrix object. And then we, we would be able to, well, using thinking particles. So, well, it, that would be more complicated. Uh, if you use the matrix and then use here the thinking particles, then the matrix object can be affected uh, by deformers. And that would be, that would give us some very interesting stuff. Uh, but in just one hour, I won't be able to show, to show that. I already want to, to show the force field. 
Yeah, yeah, of course. I was wondering that we did have one quick question on rendering. I was wondering, are uh, will we be covering that today at any point? Rendering like our yes. particles and the traces. Yes, I'd like to do that with Redshift uh, uh, for the end project, the hero project, because the setup is very simple. Uh, yeah, yeah, I perfect. went very fast with it, but this one is a super easy render to make, and there is some interesting stuff. It's really, really super easy. I mean, that would the, the base principle of that. It's like ten minutes. Of course, there is a lot more work to make it look really good. But uh, the basic concept of this uh, render is pretty easy using Redshift, of course. Cool. And maybe, yeah, this is another example. And maybe we we'll have time to, to show this one also. I don't know. Let's hope. Yeah, no, that'd be great. Cool, uh, thanks. OK, so let's talk about uh, just before the force field, one interesting stuff to, to see is just one step ahead with the particles is to use it with more graph. So actually, if you use your emitter, and I'm going to create a cloner, and the cloner, I'm going to put it on object mode, and then I'm going to make, make the emitter as the source object here. Now, any object I'm going to use with the cloner, is going to be the particles. So if I just use a cube, and let's make it a child of the cloner. Now, if I hit play, we can see those are particles, more graph particles, I would say. And here on the cloner, let's make it multi-stance, so it will be much faster. So everything is going to work the same, meaning that your emitter is going to be affected by forces. Everything I have shown here is going to work exactly the same, but you have all the power of our graph on top of that. So the only trick here is not confuse what's going on uh, because you have the forces and the effector, then also all the, um, all the fields working together. It's very easy to get lost. So let's see a very simple example. Here I have a streamer particle going uh, this way. Okay, and I'm going to again to trace them because it looks good and also it gives us a good sense of what's going on with the motion. And then because this is a cloner, I can use an effector. So if I put a plain effector, it's going to move it, move the particles on top of it. So let's go back and you have one very confusing and interesting stuff going on. You can see our particles are not really affected by the effector because this is the cloner which is affected by the plane effector. Okay, that's important to know because uh, it makes sense that the cloner is taking the particles as a source object and then the plane effector is working only on the cloner. Okay, so don't be confused by that. That's normal. Uh, I would say we don't care because uh, only the actual clones here are interesting. Okay, so that being said, now because we have our plane effector moving everything up uh, like that, we can make some interesting stuff like, for example, a random field. If I put a random field on top of that, we will see that our particles are going to move randomly on the y axis. Okay, so here it's not very interesting, but if I take my nose, noise, I'm going to make it much bigger like that. We'll have some kind of wave motion, much nicer. And this is very smooth. works very well, as you can see. So from there, it's pretty easy to, to create, uh, to use a, your um, usual object, uh, for example, uh, an extrude. Let's make a little change before. I'm going to take my emitter and let's change the size of the emitter. I want, to, I want it to be much bigger like that and just on line. So we have a stream 
of particles on a line and a more interesting wave pattern like that. So let's increase also the bus rate editor. And you can see we have this motion here. And from there, we could use on top of that all the forces that we know. For example, if I use again my uh, rotation. So here now the rotation is on the right axis. So I put it back to the center. Let's put it there. And I'm going to use a linear field because I want it to take effect after some time. So linear field on the Z plus Z axis. So it's going to happen only from there. So we have our particles and then here, they're going to move this way and they're still wavy because of the effect, the effector. You can see we have some very interesting, uh, well, that's really fun. That, that's what I like with particles. I mean, it's endless fun. I'm sure Chad would agree with that. Yes, I'm I'm just completely like salivating and slobbering all over myself watching this. It's absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. I love to play uh, with particles. And just to finish up with this, I'm going to untick those two. And instead of using random field, we could create a real uh, wave using, for example, here the formula effector. So the formula effector is going to create a sine wave. So yeah, like that very easy uh, let's create less particle for this because it's going to get just very confusing and those are very regular uh, you can see there is no um, there is no uh, randomness with that uh, and it's very easy to change if I get I go again on the here and on the variables we have I, I won't even uh, talk about this <laughs> it's not that hard really but you don't have to to dig in that and now if i just change the frequency uh, it's going to be a longer sine wave and this is a very smooth motion because there is no randomness with that and we could associate this with a random field so actually i could put this random field as um, a mask of this. So I'm going to create a mask. Let's put the random field inside. And here, I guess I'll put it on pure random. And let's decrease the scale. Hey, Leona. So they don't have the same, yes? Can I ask you a quick question? Um, uh, yes, for those ahead. of for those of us that are maybe not as skilled with fields, <laughs> um, when you made the random field a mask of the formula effector, um, mm -hmm. what does that mean exactly? Well, it's, it means exactly what it says. It's a mask. So you will see, uh, well, it's 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 perfect transition to, to the force field because I'm going to use the mask a lot. and then it would it will make sense um it's really using at the mask meaning that i'm going to filter the formula through the random field okay so it will it'll make much sense with the the force field so let's move on okay so yeah, half an hour, perfect. Uh, so the force field is the ultimate way of controlling particles with um, native cinema 4D particles. So the field force is here. And it's amazing, but it's a bit complex. So let's see first how it works. Uh, I'm going to create again our simple emitter. Okay, so it's going to stream particle this way. All right. And then I'm going to, to add our force, field force. Okay, so our field force is going to, to give direction. By default, there is nothing going on, so it's not going to do anything. I'm going to change the velocity type to 
absolute velocity. Okay, this is the hardest mode, I would say, but um, also the, the one that will give you full control. And here with the strength of five, well, it's not going to do, ever, nothing's going to happen because you can see our particle has stopped right away because they are totally controlled with this one, okay? And because I, have, I haven't put anything here, nothing happens. Okay, so let's add something, a simple solid, okay? We hardly ever use the solid layer with um, usual MoGraph, but here it's going to be interesting. If I just put it here, we can see the vector field appearing, okay? So here we have vectors, and this is very easy. You have your vector here, so Y is up, Z is right, and X is uh, our way um, toward the camera. So here it's moving up, and if I just hit play, we can see our particles are going to move up. Okay, it's not that obvious because the speed is here. Now it's more obvious. Okay, so, well, that's not very interesting yet. I'm going on the field force also to in the field uh, display. In the display, I'm going to untick the display vector length. Okay, so we can see our uh, direction. Also, I'm going to change the box size here. So we have a single layer here of lines. Okay, now we can see very clearly it's going to move up. Okay, it's three dimensional, but this way it's easier to read. Okay, so our emitter, our particle are going to, to go this way. Meaning that any speed I put there, it does, we, we, we don't care because uh, it's going to be controlled by this absolute velocity. Okay, so here we have our particles shooting up. So what I'm going to do here on the field force, I'm going to change to the right. Okay, so back to the beginning, we have our particles moving to the right, thanks to this solid. And now what's going to be interesting is to add another solid. Okay, so if I put another solid, Moving up, you can see those two are going to, to combine, and now they're going to shoot on this direction. Okay, so it's still not very interesting, but what if if I use this solid and filter it through a mask? So the mask is here, and if I use now a linear field as um, a child of this, so I'm I'm holding Shift, we have our linear field as a child. I'm going to put it, on, put it on plus Z and let's move it this way. And yes, <laughs> you have to activate here the value. And now let's go to the field force and let's just extend the here our size so we can see what's going on. And this way and also let's add, and you can see very clearly that we have this field force going this way and then it's going to be altered here by our um, linear field uh, controlled by our solid field controlled by the linear field. Okay, so let's paste it and we can see our particles are going this way. It's as simple as that. Okay, and they're going to add on top of each other. Okay, so Using a solid like this, you can control the stream of your particles. And I hope it's, is it make it, uh, does it make sense to use the mask here? We can see it's, uh, it's very important because this is the one that let us control here when the turn is going to happen. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely and, seems to make sense. For me, at least, and in this way, then you once we have understood that, you can do almost anything you want. Okay, so let's move uh, our field force. Actually, the position of the field force doesn't have any uh, importance because um, it's infinite. All right, it's infinite, and here our linear field is just going to control uh, this way, for example. So our particles are going this way and then moving up. So once you have understood that, you can 
use some tricks. For example, I'm going to move uh, our linear field this way, okay? And let's add on the field first here, I'm going to, you, to um, use a spherical field, or is it? Yes, here. Spherical field, which is inside our uh, field. I'm going to activate here the direction, and you can see it's going to alter the direction. And it's working because it's inside uh, the, the field. And it's altering here the direction of the particles. And you can see it's going to move the particle toward the center. So let's see. Uh, also, I'm going to trace the particle. I, I think it'll be easier for everyone to see what's going on, I hope. So now we have our particles and they're going to concentrate here and then they're going to move up. See, and now they go this way and they're shooting on diagonal. And what's really good with this, it's, well, it's, it's, it's easy to see that uh, if I want to have less um, this, uh, our spherical field is too strong, I'm just going to decrease. And we have the same effect, but not as strong. Also, I'm going to make a bigger emitter this way, okay. So now I have shooting particles. They're going to converge a bit, and then they're going this way. So you have a, an amazing control over your particles. I would say the only problem is it's a bit complicated, but not, <laughs> not as complicated as anything in Houdini, I would say. So <laughs> it's, uh, once you, you have understood uh, how it works, uh, it's pretty easy to, to do some, some nice stuff with that. So for example, what I could do is I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to recreate uh, um, the tornado we have done earlier. So I'm going to create an emitter and let's put it this way, 90 degrees. Okay, perfect. I'm going to add uh, straight away a field force. Okay, so here it is. And we're going to change, uh, to add our, to our field force. So I'm going to add a solid. So the solid is going to move everything up and let's change to set absolute velocity. Again, I need to change here because uh, yeah, it's more confusing than uh, anything. And okay, that work. I'm going also to trace the particle. So now it's shooting up. And now what about adding to that? So we have our field force. So saying that everything move up, okay? What if I add on top of this one very interesting field, which is the radial radial field? So radial field is going to to make some kind of a helix motion on the y-axis, which is exactly what I want. So let's move it this way, and also let's change. Well, I guess we can we can leave it like that. And if I want, yeah, you can see here, it's going to move everything um, to take effect immediately. So let's take a look. I'm going to just hide. So we have our um, the same thing at the rotation, okay? And if I wanted to change the axis, I could do that. It's going to move more this way, you can see. It's going to alter the motion like we have warped something, we could also animate. And if I wanted to, to have uh, more control with that, we can just add to our field force. So I'm going to make it visible again. And here on the field force on the object, we could limit the radial effect using here a mask again. And I want the mask to happen only within a box field. So it's very, very similar to what I have done earlier. So let's put the box field and our box field will be this way. And again, I don't know why it does that. You have to activate this 
otherwise it won't work this is going to alter the um, the values so here yeah good example even though we don't see our field force it's going to work so let's hide it let's hit play going up and then it's going to move and then it's going again so you see same thing as uh, the rotation and what i mean by that is you can literally replace anything here with the only force field this is already the the one that unified everything because uh it's how you create vector field and you can do anything you want uh, then with that okay so moving on uh, i'm going to to show you just a trick uh, if we go one step further and we want to recreate our um, i have already too many windows i want to recreate this file here as we can see we have particles streaming like this and we have a very nice motion and this is again thanks to the force field so yeah, yeah, this file is in French. So this is here our uh, force field. And there is not many stuff uh, happening. So it will be easy to recreate. The only difference here, we're going to use uh, the vector field generator. So this is again, one step uh, further. So let's create again our emitter. Okay. And I want now to use our uh force field force okay and now i'm going to control the field force with the very specific object very specific item which is the vector field so for this i'm going to create now a volume builder and i'm going to put it in vector mode this is the trick okay use the vector mode then i'm going to put on that a random field so let's put it inside and you can see it's going to create this okay so those are vectors if i take my random field and i increase the scale we can see something happening and if i go there i don't know if you can see it very well but uh, there is some direction from this random field okay so if i use it right away with the field force it's going not going to work so i'm already going to to the trick so to make it work the way we want well no let's let's see what happened what, what happens if i don't do the right stuff so i'm going to hide the volume builder we have our field force i'm going to use the volume builder as the source here as a volume object okay we can see we have some errors so that should work but it won't let's change to absolute velocity let's increase okay so we do have some vector fields and if i hit play we can see something happening but it's not very convincing it's not moving the way we want let's increase the the velocity so we can see yeah, it, it's strange it, it shouldn't do that and then the particle gets stuck even if i add a tracer we will see it's not right you see that that's garbage okay so what's going on we need to to change something because actually our our um, particles are going to get stuck inside a loop you you will have many vectors converging so that the particle is going to be trapped like uh if someone is going to go to tell you to go forward and someone is going to go backward and you have someone going le tell you, telling you to go left and they are going to go right then you don't move okay that's some something like that um which is happening so we need to add on our volume builder just one simple stuff which is here the vector curl okay and the vector curl is going to do something that's going to make everything work okay it's going to to simplify it's going to ensure that you don't you can don't get stuck in, in the loop and then you have uh, a curl noise so let's hide everything 
And if I hit play, so let's change, yeah, our fuel force, we need to change the direction. Uh, it doesn't work on absolute velocity. And now we have our uh, motion, as you can see. So several stuff to do to make it work. On the fuel force here, our volume builder, we need to change to quadratic. So yeah, I'm aware that there's a lot of thing going on. That's why you can replay the videos. So uh, I'm going to change the volume builder from nearest to quadratic. It's going to make a smoother uh, motion, as you can already see. Also, I need to go back to our volume builder and I want to make a bigger random field. So on the volume builder here, I'm going to take the random field and we're limited to this size. So let's make it much bigger like that. Okay, and let's hide because we don't see anything. And now we can see our particles are going and create those amazing motion. At some point, they're going to get to the edge of our volume builder. So either you use here on the forces the destructor I have already shown, or you just frame so that you don't see those um, those issues. So yeah, Let, let's see about the render. Maybe I'll, I'll uh, answer question after that. Uh, because I think it's very interesting to see how to render this. So we're going to use Redshift for that. I'm going to use on the tracer here. Let's use here. So of course you need to make Redshift your render. On R26, we have a, everything that's going to, to work. You, you don't have a Redshift. Uh, tabs anymore, you go to render tags, let's go to redshift object, and let's change the curve, let's start with the air strength, and that's already enough if I use now my redshift render view, and let's dock it there. That's already enough to see our curve, and you can see it's very, very fast. Okay, so there is an issue that you can see here, here you can see it's um it's jagged we it should be smooth and curved okay so to solve that you just need to go to your tracer and you're going to change the type from linear to cubic and then intermediate points let's use the um uniform and let's change to maybe two or three that should be should be right enough you can see now it's curved it's smooth, much nicer. Okay, so now if we want to make it look a bit more interesting, I'm going to change a few stuff here. We're using the hair strands. Hair strands are for hair, obviously. And actually it's a sprite, meaning that it's always going to face the camera. Uh, it's not a real object. It's, um, it's not like a tube. So it's nice to have just lines like that, but if you want to use some materials like uh, metal or glass, we're going to create actual geometry. And then we can do that here by changing from hair strands to capsules. So now we have actual cylinder, okay? We can change a bit the size if you want. As you can see we have some shading now we didn't have earlier because we use the hair strands okay now let's use some light i'm going to create just one array light this way i'm going to put it far away i'm going also to create uh, a camera also i'm going to change the output to 800 by 800 square frame all right that's better let's be the camera let's move a bit this way okay i'm going to exit the camera so you can see the scene so we have one light here i'm going to add another light the other way so you have to 
rotate it, holding shift so we can flip it. And already we will have some light here. So if I just hit play, we can see some shading. So too strong, let's decrease intensity. And here, so we have a sense of direction. We have the light coming from the left. Okay, that could be cool already, but let's do something else. We're going to add some materials. So here I'm going to create uh, the new standard material from a chip, which is just amazing. Use it all the time. It's much better than the usual, um, well, the old standard material, which is now just material. So standard is uh, the new one, much better. We're going to use it on the tracer here, and I'm going to make it a glass object. So I just need here in transmission, go to the weight of one. Okay, and already we have some nice highlights and so on. And I'm just going to use a dirty trick. Well, it's not dirty, but a cheap trick. Yeah, that's better. And I'm going to use the dispersion here. And this works the other way you would think, uh, meaning that zero is off. And then if you put one, that's a lot. A lot of dispersion. If you go a uh, strong value, it's little dispersion. So it's going to create some kind of rainbow effect. So it's heavy on the render. So you'll need time for everything to converge. And we can see we have a lot of colors. So I'm not on my usual computer. So, but after some time, you will have uh, some nice color, but that's not all the trick. Huh? As you can see here, we, we need some something else. You can see it's getting better but we're not quite there yet. So to make it even cooler, I'm going to use a trick, uh, which is to create uh, some object. So I'm going to create a simple sphere. Let's put it on the center. Let's add some segments. I'm going to create an incandescent material. So let's add it to the sphere. And our incandescent material, we're going to use yeah, the color mode. Let's increase the bit the intensity and let's use some, some nice uh, strong color. Stronger than that. Okay, now let's add some glow because everything needs glow. Let's add the bloom. Okay, that's a bit too much. But now I just need to decrease the intensity and find some kind of balance. Okay, so that's already cool. And you can see the red of the sphere is going to spread through the object. And to make everything even more interesting, now I'm going to add other objects like that, but I will make them invisible. So let's use a cylinder. Let's make it very thin. I'm going to exit the camera let's move it this way so yeah of course uh, by the way this is a trick uh, from Nidia Diaz which is an amazing uh, Portuguese uh, art director I think he ha she has already done uh, something on the max uh, 3d action um, 3d design action show and this is one of her trick so let's create another incandescent material which with another color. So let's try some blue, some deep blue. Okay, I'm going to add it to our cylinder. Let's increase, uh, yeah, I already done that. Now, if we go back to our camera, we can see it, okay, it's too strong. Uh, I want to make it even, I want to make it stronger like that. Okay, so I could use it just as it is. It's uh, it's nice, but the trick here is just to make it generate reflection. So now I'm just going to the redshift to the render tax redshift object, and just hide it from the primary ray visible, meaning that it's going to be invisible to the camera, but it's going to shine through everything else, and you can see it here before all black and now after we have this effect this color 
and you just spread a few of those objects here and you get some very nice color. So yeah, I'm kind of rushing everything, but you get the idea to avoid those very bright areas here. We need to go back to our standard material and increase the roughness on the reflection, which is going to increase the roughness also on the transmission. So let's increase the roughness. It's going to be more spread out like that. Uh, maybe let's add some roughness here. It's going to be more like a glossy um, material. And I guess I need to tune down a bit the other light. And then you need to wait to have um, something that converge and going to, to make something like that. Yeah, because the, this one took like um, five minutes to render on my computer, which is um, my, my home computer, which is the uh, I think a three yeah thirty ninety uh, T, um, RTX. So it's uh, it's long, but we have some very nice results. And yeah, that's it. It does look amazing. I love that trick with like the cylinders and the incandescent light. Same. And then hiding it from the primary ray. That's yeah, it creates a really cool effect. That's gorgeous. Yeah, well, thanks to really to Nidia to to have shown this trick. You always have to look for yeah, for everyone. What, what's everyone doing to to learn to do some some nice thing? So here, yeah, it's it's too bright, but you you get the idea. I don't have the time yeah. to make it really look great. Huh? That's the problem with the webinar. We have to rush everything at the end. Huh? <laughs> I mean, it, it's a really it's really cool to see it come together though. So the interesting part about these type of scenarios is that you get it set up and then you can manipulate it endlessly. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, when you're putting the, the key art together or the hero images, you know, you can sit and tweak this all day. Uh, but yeah, there's like a lot of really good uh, tricks. Like it it, it kind of yeah. makes me want to <laughs> want to get back in and, and go for it. I really like, uh, you know, the, the cylinder trick with the lighting. Uh, it's a very easy way to get color gradients uh, and have those art directed. Usually I would use something like, you know, gradient, actual gradient lighting through a through an HDRI. Um, but this is a bit different. So, yeah. Yeah, it's well, amazing what you can do. Like... This one is so simple that... Oh, sorry. Yeah, so with something simple. Yeah. Uh, when, when I show, when I saw the trick from from uh, Nidia Diaz, I was very surprised because uh, okay, that's all it takes, and it looks really good. Huh? It's normally the simplest kind of things, <laughs> isn't it? That you don't think of, and you think, oh, there's got to be kind of a really crazy process behind something. But sometimes it's just just a light. Or, a, or an object yes, that's been uh, about hidden. This, about this file uh, with the volume builder, hey, it's, it's, this is actually quite a simple file. It's very easy to replicate it. Uh, I had to rush it a bit, but it's uh, it's very, very simple. I, I will uh, give the, the file anyway, so people will be able to, to play with it. That's great. Awesome. Thanks. We've got a couple of questions in if if we've got the time. Like I know we've, we've gone over, but hey. That's the rules now, isn't it? And this one is potentially one that we could open up to to the group. So Scott was wondering: is so you were using the new uh, standard material? He was wondering: is this the new way of making redshift materials? So, what are your opinions on this? Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I think it's going to replace altogether the other one. The other one will be just um, a legacy shader so that uh, the file won't get broken but uh, the new standard material is superior to the other to the other one in all way uh it's it's even simpler to use i think it's uh, really amazing I, I know you you all have played with it uh this is great so yes definitely use it and i'm pretty sure it's going to be the new default material in very soon yeah i, it's definitely yeah, I agree 
Oh no, you go, Dustin. You go. What do you think? No, I I was just saying I agree. It's definitely uh, a bit different. It's easier to use, um, a little bit more intuitive. We, you know, when you get into it, so that's that's nice. Um, and it's standard. So when you're working on, you know, in Redshift across, you know, various software and things, it it all makes sense. So it's uh yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you're using Redshift, yeah, definitely start start using the standard surface cuz it I imagine will become the default. It's more industry standard and especially when it comes to converting over from kind of like other software and DCCs, it's yeah, going to be useful yeah. for that if you get yes. on all the things. But that's why it's called the standard because it looks a lot like the Arnold um, standard shader which is a kind of industry standard so it will be easier to switch from one render engine to the other yeah i believe it was actually based on yeah, that i can see a question well. i can see a question i can answer um uh is it is there a benefit to using using redshift to create geometry versus uh, versus sweep generator oh yes definitely i mean even this simple scene with the sweep generator would I don't think it would crash, but it would just crawl to a very, uh, it would be very, very slow. And with Redshift, you can push it instantly far. It's going to be uh, very fast. So yeah, definitely use as much as you want, um, as you can, uh, the RS object for anything for to, to create particles, to create uh, trails and so on. Sweet. Oh, so there's one more uh, from Alberto about importing point cloud files. I do not know what that's referring to, but do, do you guys? Huh. Um, I haven't tried that. So I think there is a way to hmm, maybe. No, I don't know. Uh, do, do, yeah, you, do you I, know, guys? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> racking my brain on that one as well. Uh, I feel like that would that would have to be a bit more of a, an R and D session. Yeah, I, I yeah. guess there is a way with X particles, but with Cinema 4D, I'm not too sure. But that's something I will investigate. Yeah, I was gonna say you've got got an entire month, so it's something we can always take a look at. Cool. So yeah, just as a quick reminder, next week will be you again, Lionel, with uh, Bob Wormsley from yeah. Insidium diving into some oh, X particles, yes. I believe. So that should be a really interesting week again. But thank you so much, Lionel. First of all, thank you so much for this entire session. Like we've had some really lovely comments in the questions area, and people saying they can't wait to already go back and rewatch all this amazing stuff and to Chad and Dustin as well being in the background sort of interacting with everyone is is really great to have you all here well th fun. thank you for uh, inviting me it's always no. like, like I said I always like to, to play with particles it's so fun yeah. yeah no me too it's it's great to see what native c4d can do as well yeah for sure it's very easy to get lost in, in plugins and software and, and different things. And, you know, so it's really cool to see both ways to do it. It's good. It is. Yeah, it's amazing what you were able to come up with, like this, this the standard C4D emitter, you know, I think, like, <clears throat> we talk about, like, it's, you know, very limited, but, you know, mm -hmm. when you really know what you're doing, like Leonel does here, like, I mean, you could create some unbelievably gorgeous stuff. So. Um, yeah, it's fantastic to see that. Yeah. Cool. Right. Well, have a lovely rest of your days and weeks, uh, everyone. Everyone's watching us live and to you guys as well. And yeah, we'll catch you on another session soon. Yeah, sounds Great. good. See Bye, you. everyone. See you next week, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.